Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Aaron, how are you, buddy? We're taking a different path today as we, at the time of this recording, enter 2023. So this may be right on time for some of you, but some of you may be listening to this many months after. It doesn't have to be in a new year to hear about some of these peak performance secrets that we are going to reveal today that I appropriately called sort of a new game being played, Aaron, sort of a different approach to way you to the way you handle you so that you can show up in your business effectively, productively every single day. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this today because it's stuff that's immediate and it's relevant to your results. And I like things that I can put into play immediately that I, I see an impact from. Right. And, uh, you know, I was feeling a little bit lethargic. Uh, maybe it wasn't even, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a little bit lethargic, but it was also a little bit, uh, I felt like it was in a bit of a rut. Uh, like and like think, when in what time frame? Well, I just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, over the last like six months, it's been an amazing six months. And what I found myself really, it's been an amazing year. I found myself working, 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 and then celebrating every single week. And it was starting to impact my mental state. It was starting to impact performance in some areas. Yet everybody around me was saying, yeah, you know, this is normal. This is how you live your life. Like this, this is what. What do you mean by celebrating people. every week? Yeah, people that have resources, people that you know have some level of wealth. Like this is totally normal. But I was feeling like I was in a rut, and I wanted to do something different. So a little bit of what I've decided to do has spurred on this conversation, which should be fun. Which is that I wanted to look at the habits that had snuck in and reset everything. So I did a little bit of research. Um, a guy in the marketing space named Andy Frazella actually created something called 75 Hard. And it's a, uh, a mental strength program that I started seven days ago. And the tenets of it are very simple. The execution of it for most people will be quite hard, hence the name. However, the way that it's making me feel physically and the mental clarity that I'm getting is outstanding. And, and I think that it's really, really important at any given time. It doesn't matter if you're super fit, if you're average fit, if you're not fit at all. It's really important to stop and audit what's going on with you and do a, a, like a, a really authentic assessment from time to time and ask yourself if you're happy with your current state. And if you're not, do some research and, and find something that's going to help you get to where you wanna go. And a lot of people will think that we're just talking about physical today. F physical affects everything. Well, you know, just to preface what you said, we're veering off a little bit today to talk about peak performance secrets because the one commonality that we continue to see over and over and over again, we speak to a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of producers, a lot of key people, leaders. They have pretty specific discipline regimens that surround their health, physical and mental. Otherwise, they can't show up and perform. And, and I still, I'm still shocked Aaron, by how few connect the dots on that. So many are just running and going and quick and rushing and they just getting the hours in and then running around, running around crazy. And they just, everything about them is a, is, a, is a second thought. There's no plan around wellness, fitness, nutrition, optimization. And I keep seeing those same people on again, off again, sick, not sick, sick again, not sick, on again. They make no progress. They're in constant frustration hamster wheel mode. And that's what we want to talk about today is some of the things we do since it's so valued in our lives, some of the things that you can do physically, mentally, nutritionally. Otherwise, and I'll get to the, you know, some of my reasons. We're in a, a war, we're in World War III right now, guys. I'm going to come straight out and say it. We're in World War III with the public health agencies of the world today. They literally want you to think you can't do any of this. They literally want to create medicine 
for every time the wind blows. And you're going to get, if you get stuck in that biopharmaceutical complex, you're going to really have a hard time naturally optimizing yourself long term. And that's kind of where I'm going to go. You're going to go on your routine and then I'll, I'll comment on that as well. But we are in a really, really, we're, we're in uncharted territory. This is, there's no, well, and, and I think it's a good right now. It's just absolutely brutal to watch. And I just, I, I just keep seeing people getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. It's crazy. Well, and, and I think that this is a one, two punch conversation today, because if you don't do the things that we're talking about, you're going to get sick. And when you do get sick, the majority of the recommendations that you get probably are not, will keep you a little sicker than <laughs> yeah, in most they, cases, they, they might actually make you sicker or they might just put a bandaid on. There might, yeah, like you might get a solution that puts a little Band-Aid on it, but the long-term results is, is you're still going to get sicker or you're going to die, right? Yeah, and it's crazy. It's, it, the, it is possible to reverse yourself when you get sick. However, the best way to not get sick is to be proactive from the beginning, which and is the this, things that we're talking about. And this about. is peak performance secrets right there. This is peak performance secrets. There's There's a quote I heard the other day that, that the wealthier get healthier and the poorer get sicker. And I thought about it for a second and I was like, hmm, but is there maybe a reverse to that? Is it maybe the healthier get wealthier and the sick get poorer? Because I think it's probably both. It, it's, it could be both. If you are in and out of commission all the time, mm -hmm. that's where we're you going. can't sustain focus. You can't create relationships. You can't think clearly. You can't be sharp on your feet. You can't be a good parent. You're in a constant state of frustration and angst. You, yeah, you can't be a good parent. You can't be a good business person. You probably have a lot of weird self-talk going on, self-loathing, doubt, questioning, yeah, yeah. lack of focus. Right. And all of these things will pile up on top of you and make it very difficult to lead a happy, great life. And so the elements that I'm talking about today are about staying ahead of the curve. So I'm a big believer that you have to manage what you do with your body and what you put in your body. And so the, the habit that I saw creeping in over the last year was I would go to the gym four times a week. I would work nine hours a day. I would sleep like a champion because I know that's a, that's, that's very impactful for me. Um, I even wear a band, Andrew, I got it for Christmas called a whoop. I've, I've heard of that. Yeah. I wear the aura ring. You wear the whoop. Same kind of thing. Yeah. It tells me all my stats in my phone, how, how good my sleep is and yeah, so on yeah. and so forth. If you're not sleeping an optimal amount, that is a, a game changer for you this year. But the one thing I noticed is that like Friday, I just so wanted badly to disconnect from the craziness that goes on in, in running all the businesses that I run, that I would just go drink beers, you know, have dinner, completely disconnect, have too many drinks. That was that was like, like a normal, regular Friday routine for you? Normal, fr regular Friday or Saturday routine. Okay. And, Friday and, and Saturday or Friday or Saturday? No, it was either Friday or okay, Saturday so that's better. because I like the to work out Saturday morning. The or is better than the and. Let's, let's, let's at least yeah, get on that. <laughs> and, and let's be serious. There was a few where it was and. I'm sure there was. Right? We're but I like to work out Saturday mornings. We're all so, human. you know, it's, it's tough to go out and blow off steam and then work out Saturday mornings. And I like to yeah, work out Saturday too. mornings. Good point. Either way, one day of the weekend was getting completely written off being hungover. And so then I'm sitting on the couch, I'm ordering pizza and chicken oh, wings. Oh, God, you're a slacker. I didn't even realize it. Oh, I'm not moving, <laughs> you know, like I'm not feeling like I'm being a good parent. You know, there's all these other elements yeah, that, the, the that are making The self-talk begins, the guilt. Set the guilt, the self-talk, right. et cetera, et cetera. And then Monday I'd be recovered and I'm back at the same grind. So I'm doing all these things to perform at this level, but then I'm like tanking myself right here. Playing that you seesaw. Know, that seesaw, right? So- I started to do this thing called 75 hard last week and here are the components to it. Number one, you have to choose an eating plan. And the key word there is it, 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 I hate the word diet. Mm -hmm. So I don't use the word diet. A, a, the key is a plan could be paleo, could be vegetarian, could, could be, be carnivore, keto, but it's be, a plan. I think is the key word. It's a plan. Yeah. I think anytime you use the word diet, 
it has this negative connotation and it also has a short lived lifespan to you where it, it's like, oh, I'm going to suffer for a while to get this yeah, end I result. Think, I think there's a stigma in an old school element to diet. I think eating plan or nutrition regimen is probably a little yeah. bit more adaptable. So what, what I dusted off, Andrew, was remember the old Eating for Life by Bill Phillips? Yeah, that was a, a mecca, a mecca bo body for life, I think. Well, the program was called Body for Life, did and he then he, a, a second version? he created a recipe book called Eating for Life ah, to smart. go with it. Okay. And I really liked the Eating for Life because it was high protein, low sugar, six times a day, kept the metabolism burning, yep. so on and so forth. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this plan. That's going to be my eating plan. Yep. I got to work out twice a day. Now, when I told you I'm working out twice a day, you almost lost your mind. Well, yeah, we Let talked, that, we, we just to preface that, we talked, we always sort of compare notes in the beginning of the show. Yeah. And I'm like, Aaron, um, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Nobody is going to be able to maintain the motivation of working out twice a day. So please define working out twice a day because I think, I think it might it be has the a wrong broad wording. Spectrum. <laughs> it has a broad spectrum, which includes movement a 40 a 45 minute walk could be considered okay fair. your exercise right. which isn't really okay. a workout it's movement again we're it, it's semantics what do you consider a workout right. right like where does your heart rate have to be to be considered a workout so yep. what i'm doing is i'm i'm walking or jogging for 45 minutes every day the key is it has to be outside too, regardless of weather mm. so that i get the sun which i know you are a big believer you and in. i have an edge there what do you tell the person in minnesota <sighs> In February, <laughs> I guess you're gonna have to woman or man up okay. and go out and make it happen. Right. Like it's it's you a shorter be workout, but hey, it's yeah. It's, you gotta you gotta you gotta get all those layers on you. One of my friends here, Andrew, does a hundred mile race in Minnesota in the winter every couple of years. Is that right? And she's from the Cayman Islands, so yeah, imagine there's, the adjustment there's a whole to the lot to be there. said about getting outside. Something also so, that we're at if odds she with. Can do it, yeah. yeah, if she can do it. You can do it too. 10 minutes right? versus her 100 hours, right? Yeah. She's, she, it has to be 45 minutes. So I'm lifting for 45 and I'm walking or jogging outside in the sun for 45. You have to consume 20 minutes of nonfiction per day. So you have to commit to personal growth. So all these books behind me that – you know, I keep buying and I'm not actually even reading. Hey, I'm listen, you, I, I, I've been told that you, you just sometimes, mine are all this way. Sometimes you just get smarter looking at them. <laughs> um, Osmosis? Not always. <laughs> uh, but hey, listen, there's also something to be said for getting really good books and sometimes skimming through the chapters and grabbing a few points. It doesn't have to be a front to back read all the time. It no. can be just a... And, and, and I'm, I'm really enjoying carving out this time. I'm doing yeah, that's it before important. bed instead of you know, watching Netflix or whatever, oh, yeah. or I'm doing it in the morning before Absolutely. I start my day. Uh, and then you got to take a picture of yourself every day just to show your progress, which was pretty astounding. In the first six days, I could see differences in my, in, in my body and in my energy. Hmm. And, uh, and there's no alcohol for the 75 days and there's no cheat meals. Not even so a lot weekend. of programs have a cheat day. In yeah. Them. Like a Sunday or something, right? Yeah. There's no cheating. The idea behind this is that you have to create new habits and you have to, you have to repel the crutches that you have. And by doing that, you become more mentally strong. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the physical outcome is insane. I mean, if you go online and you, you Google 75 hard, you'll see a million before and afters that are astonishing. Because if you're going to – oh, did I mention you have to drink a gallon of water per day? So that's four of these. So – a gallon, four, four one liter bottles per day. Right. So you do all of those things. You have an eating plan. You drink a gallon of water a day. You exercise twice a day. You, you know, you're reading, you're taking pictures of yourself. To you're, hold moving, yourself. you're moving, you're moving, you're moving key, right? This is a, the, the movement situation is a, is a disaster today, right? Of course. If you're doing all of these things, you're not drinking alcohol. Yeah. You're not having cheat meals. You're well hydrated on top of you're it. You're well hydrated. All of these elements That's are impressive. going to turn you into physically a different human being, of course. Now, which, how does that tie but, back? How did, well, go ahead. Sorry. I'll just wrap it with this and then I'll open the floor to you because I've been talking for a while. But it's not just the physical. The physical is a great result of it. It's getting control over your mind again because your mind is constantly telling you, well, that last – Half a bottle of water won't matter. Oh, all my friends are going out. I took my daughter out. She's going to college. You know, tomorrow she leaves for college. First time. Took her out for a celebration dinner last night. What does she order? She orders a, a glass of champagne. 
What do I want to order? I want to order a glass of champagne. I'm at an Italian restaurant. What do I want? I want some pasta. Red wine. Right? I want a glass of red wine. Nope. Seafood, salad. Not even a sip for the toast, brother? Nothing. Weak. Zero. I'm because, about this. because I made a commitment, right? So you're, you're, you're battling constantly and eventually your wins mm-hmm. in your mind start to stack up. And they start to feel pretty good. Wins feel good. And they start to feel pretty good. And when, and when obstacles are thrown your way throughout life, especially in business, which they will happen a ton, Mm -hmm. you just become more steeled against them. You become Mm -hmm. more impervious to their impact. Yeah. The word there is resilience. Resilience, the ability to endure. And this is is what you are going to need to have. This suit of armor is what you are going to need to have to be successful over the next five years. It's impressive, man. I love hearing what you're up to because the whole, I'll unpack a little bit of it because I have a lot of experience in this space. But the key is when you box yourself into a plan of any kind, you've pretty much got 80% of the work out of the way because the old saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to feel fail. A lot of these workouts are open-ended. They're just movement. Yep. There's just activity, not accomplishment. There's no real accountability. There's no, like you're like, you, you know, you're in a 75 day window right now. Yep. So you could work in a 30 day window, a 90 day quarterly, like a lot of business goal planning is like, we'll work in 90 day blocks, things like that. Like when you know you have a beginning and an end time, things are more achievable because you're trying to get to the finish line. When you don't yep. have a finish line to get to, it's really easy to veer off and quit. So I, I, I'm anxious to see how you do as you get to day 30. And then 60. Now the question becomes, you've, you've built this new foundation. Where do you then go for it? Is it another 75 days? Is it a different program? Don't know. The key is, I know I'm jumping ahead. The key is that you'll probably want to be on another regimen and a plan because you've responded so well being in the window. That's yeah. really the key. Right is is and, is, is and, being and what you said there about a date is really important. One of my favorite quotes ever is a goal without a date is just a wish. Right, right. And so I know, seventy five days. This is what I'm doing. It's not. I should eat better. I should drink less. I got to get should. to the. So so usually the new year is and and if you're watching this or listening and in any time it's the same. I, I just need to get to the gym and then they just go get to the gym and they jump around and they do a million hours in a boot camp and they get all sweaty and stuff and they just keep going and then. That usually fizzles out quick because there's no real direction. It's just movement. It's usually activity confused with accomplishment. That's the key. That's the key right there that you have a, uh, you you have activity in a window and it's designed to, for you to accomplish something. Now you mentioned what it does to you mentally, but I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to talk about what it does to you physically allows you to feel that way mentally. So the, the physical will precede the mental. And then yep. all of this leads back to how do I show up every day to work and perform and produce and make money, right? So yep. the physical is everything. I've always been like militant with the physical because the physical dictates the mental. Like you and I can both agree right now, Aaron, that if you had sharp back pain, throbbing knee, Ooh, shoulder issue, like right now I'm having a neck issue, which I rarely have issues, but I'm, you know, I'm almost 50. I mean, at some yep. point, right? Uh, I got a chiropractic appointment. I've never needed to go to a chiropractor, but I'm going next week because, you know, I want to get an adjustment. I Thankfully, I've never needed one, which is a win for me, right? So you're, you, the, the physical, when you get yourself feeling good, then you mentally feel good. You can't really mentally feel good when you feel like shit physically. That's the thing. No. And I know it's obvious, but it's but most things are obvious that people just don't notice today. I think I mentioned in our in our show at the end of uh, end of uh, the year or last show. I was I'm just so blown away by how much people miss on the surface. And this is another one of those things as people want to get they want to really feel good mentally, but they really don't spend a whole lot on physically, which is like such it's like to me, it's like easy math. One plus one equals two. You can't really get to the mental well-being like you're feeling now, which carries into your business on how you perform, how you speak, how you communicate, how you lead, how you how you you, you interact with others. If you don't have a more intense physical regimen than you think you need to have. And as you get older, it needs to be even more intense and it needs to be even more <laughs> militant than probably it's ever been. So you feel good mentally. And I know you've had back issues for a long time. And, and they're I, gone. And yeah. I think you've unwound some of that with some of this, right? Yep. Like, I think you, you probably feel better. You got the physical down and that's diet and, 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 and workout. You've got that down. So now you're and able hydration. to release 
physically. You're able to see things better. You're able to not have to focus on pain or discomfort or overweightness or, or ailments or any of that. Now you can actually free up mind space to feel better. And that's yeah. what's happening right now with you. So that's, that's impressive. Um, and and, and, and I will better. add something to what you just said there real quick. Nobody wants to admit this, but if you're in the business world or you're in the sales world or you're in any world, it doesn't even matter if you're, if you work for a corporation and you want a promotion, it doesn't matter. People judge other people. Everybody wants to be in this new world where it's like, oh, you can't say this and you can't say that. And, and nobody looks at things that way. And nobody looks at things this way. That's an old school mentality. All that stuff is bullshit. Of course. Okay. Almost everything Humans, you see from, from flagship media in, in certain Demo in, in, in certain political parties are, are BS. It's all virtue it, signaling. It, humans instantly size each other up like a computer. They yep. go zoot, 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 and they bring in 62 different variables and it, they make it, it automatic subconscious. Yep. And they make a decision on who they think that person is before they've ever even had an opportunity to talk to the person. It is what it is. And when you show up high energy, chest out, chin up high, in shape, dress nice, all this, you've already won 10 of the battles before the conversation 50 even starts. 50% started. of the war is won because of the way you show up. Of how you show up. Right. Now, if you show up unhealthy, overweight, dress like a slob, mm -hmm. low energy, head down, you can still win the battle. You just put yourself behind the eight ball. You actually are starting from less steps. than zero, right? You can start Let from zero or you can start from less than zero. You choose. Right. And there's people that are like that, that have amazing intellects and amazing personalities and they're able to overcome it, but they're starting from less than zero. Starting from less than zero. Why do that? Why do that? Why do that? Because people love the path of most resistance. I got two examples about that. It's so funny. I'm laughing over here as you're telling me. So we talked about the guy uh, who won the governorship in Pennsylvania who wears the mm -hmm. hoodie and shows mm -hmm. up like a complete slob, like a, like a, like a, a what, what do they call the video game kids today? Gamers? In, in, gamers, incels. Yeah. He looks like a gamer. So the virtue signaling media gives him the award. Really, it's just verbal recognition of, well, what is it? The best dressed or... I mean, you can't make this stuff up, Aaron. I mean, you and I, you and I did a a, a show a couple of weeks back, and we, we we did like the Ron DeSantis versus mm -hmm. versus John Fetterman, when mm -hmm. they accepted their wins, how they took the stage and showed up for the public and their people. And one guy shows up in a hoodie, and his whole family looked as sloppy as he did. And then DeSantis shows up in a nice suit. His wife's in a gown. His kids are in suits and dresses. And we're like, where do we live? Right. So well, he and, got. And well, hold on, hold on, Aaron. He got. He got recognized. This is how, this is how, it's such a joke to watch. It's, li it, it's liberal media. It's completely ridiculous. They're so phony. It's just almost like watching Saturday Night Live at this point. They gave him the most stylish or the most fashionable man of the year, which is, so that's point number one is a complete farce. We don't celebrate sloppiness. The second one is you got to see this new Gatorade commercial. They got a girl in this new Gatorade commercial and no disrespect to anybody that's overweight. This girl's got to be 400 pounds doing a handstand, drinking Gatorade in the new Gatorade commercial. So again, let's talk about reality. We just came off a health crisis that literally we now have facts. 90 plus percent of hospitalizations and complications with COVID-19 were in the obese. And we are now celebrating obesity on national TV. Let, let, just let's unpack that for a minute. It is just on another level, Aaron. And, and that's why you can't get distracted away from reality that you know to be true. Right. And what we know There's, to be that's true a good point. is that fit. I remember when Bill Phillips came. I don't know if you remember when Bill Phillips yeah, came. The guy who wrote well. He was the, he was the metrics guy and then the myoplex yeah. guy. He started off in the nutrition space and he revolutionized that meal replacement Industry, he did, right? He he started Metrics and EAS. And yes, EAS uh, is Myoplex, yeah. And I remember he did this presentation at this event that I was at, More Success Leaves Clues, surround yourself with smart people and go learn stuff, right? I was at a seminar that he was a part of. And he actually showed the speed of electricity going through neurons in your brain mm -hmm depending on how much fat they were coated in. Interesting. So he did this, he showed this side-by-side -side demonstration 
And he said, for all you people that want to celebrate or make excuses or this or that. Or, or, about- or, or, or Aaron, make it like it's okay. Right. Carrying too much body fat. Because it's, right. it's like, a health he, crisis. He's like, he's like, people aren't fat. Labeling people fat is, is insensitive and stupid. Yeah, we're not doing that here. Exactly. Right. Carrying too much fat, which is just an energy store. Mm-hmm. Carrying too much energy stores around is not healthy for you. And he showed, he said, look. This is the only scientific ex- example you really even need to see. He said, it makes your neurons transfer electricity slower. And he said, I'm going to translate this for you. If you are overweight versus someone who is fit, you are dumber. It's, he said, it's math. pure science. It, pure science. And he said, right, and right in the EKG scans. Yeah. He said, it's controllable. So you have opportunity to to change that anytime you want. It's not like you were born that way. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. and again, it goes back to what can we do to control our outcome and our reality, right? We can hydrate, hugely important. We can sleep, you know, and get REM and deep sleep for at least four hours a night, but you're probably total sleep hours are eight minimum. We can get outside in the environment and get off of our chairs for yes. at least an hour a day. Yep. We can choose a meal plan strategy that makes sense in our lives. Mine's a little bit militant for the next 75 days. I just want to do it for fun. Mm-hmm. But to have some plan, even if it did have a cheat day or something, a plan, a plan of any type, mm-hmm. consuming information that helps you grow, putting yourself in places where smart people are are talking and not being a sheep and, and bowing down to the, this narrative that, we should all just be really, really happy to perform at the lowest common denominator. It's almost, Aaron, like there's a movement in play. There's two movements. Really? There's one that way and there's one this way. Yeah, it's, yeah. and this is what, what, what we meant today by the title is, is what you're seeing is a new game being played by, by top producers in any space, entertainment, physical fitness, sports, business, doesn't make a difference. Um, anyways, I meant to say MRI before, like the MRI scans they do, yeah, yeah. not EKG, that's the heart. MRI are the scans of the brain that actually show what you said. This isn't like a theory. This is Look actually up. how the body works. So I get super concerned when I see us celebrating it and not speaking to reality, right? You still can have compassion and, and mental toughness at the same time. We've lost that. It, this is a snowflake culture. And when we start celebrating things like obesity and we start giving people an alibi, we're not helping them grow. We're not helping them get better at all. We're actually, we're actually enabling we're, we're enabling people and that's not good. It's an entitlement mentality. It's run rampant in the last couple of years at least, but it isn't really helping anybody grow by not facing reality and giving them an excuse and an alibi to be in a dangerous situation. If it's an overweight, an overweight thing, or like you said, an obesity thing to the, to the point of those scans, when you make it like that's okay, it, it, it it's, you're, you're misleading people. It's, it's corrupt in my view. And it's, and well, it's a complete and, and, and disconnection from reality. And I wonder sometimes where where it comes from. Well, I know exactly so where it comes this, from. This type of marketing, like what's the motivation for it? I think the motivation a lot of the times for it is it's a we question. want to love other human beings. We want everybody to see past the different elements that maybe we get caught up in and we get judgmental and we just should love each other more. And yeah, I love well, you're giving them all too much credit if you think that's what it is. I'm, I'm like, I, I always yeah, am very good, positive, not, right? Not, so not. I hope that that's the motivation. Unfortunately, However, it is not. The, if you really love people, then you what you should Give them be, the truth then, Aaron. That's give them the, the point, thing man. that's going to make them this is, happier listen, and perform better. This is a flagship media radical left-wing liberal virtue signaling movement to get votes. That's all it is. That's all it ever will be. Anytime you mislead people, we're talking about scientific, medical, metabolic health facts here. Your Bill Phillips example. Anytime you tell someone other than what you just said, Aaron, which is you're at risk, we want to help you. Here's how to do it. You can't stay like this. This is reality. You have a family. As soon as you eliminate all that enabling speech, you're you're a crook in the night. You're a you're 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 a, a fraud. You're a charlatan. You're. A, I was you're, just gonna say you're. You're a an shark. emperor with no clothes. This is the whole liberal movement we're seeing right now. It's all virtue signaling. They're all full of crap, and they will literally do anything to get a vote. Anything 
anything, anything. To get. And listen, you and I have said it a million times on the show. We're independent guys. We don't care politically right or left. We'll go where whoever's doing the least damage, that's our guy or our gal. Whoever, I, I hold share, on, hold I on, hold share on. This with hold you. on. Whoever is doing the least damage and whoever is enabling you to perform and not have you involved, government, politics, in every single aspect of our life, I don't care if Mickey Mouse is on that opposing ticket. I'm voting for Mickey Mouse because that's what we're up against right now. We're up against the movement to disable and to invalidate any of this, which is just a complete breakdown in, in, in critical thinking and reality, which is insane. I, I got to share this with you because you'll find this super, super entertaining this morning. So I work out, well, right now I work out twice a day, but this morning I was at my CrossFit gym and I work out with a girl every morning and she's a super awesome girl. I, I, I love chatting with her because she's super smart, engineer, you know, just switched on. And we're talking about this stuff this morning and she laughs and she goes, listen, man, I'm black, I'm a woman and I'm gay and I won't be voting for the party that I'm supposed to be voting for this time because I, I, can't, I can't, I literally can't. <laughs> she's like, I, I it's, she's it's like, if, if, if you're me, she goes, if you're me and you're black, gay and a female, that's that's and quite a my, that's a, that's a quite a minority stack. Yeah, this is her words, right? Yeah, Not yeah. mine. Mm -hmm. She goes, "There's a whole lot of people coming up soon that are going to be doing what what happened when Trump was voted in, where people were like, I I usually I'm over here, but I got to vote over here because I can't vote this woman in. She said it's going to happen this time. I'm usually over here, but I got to vote over here because I can't vote for this party right now. She said the same thing's going to happen. And she I was laughing, I was cracking up. Listen, you, everything's in the middle. You can take things too far left or too far right. And right now they're so far off the deep end to the left. And, and again, they're, they're also really good at math. Let's talk about the obesity thing, Aaron. We now have an obesity epidemic. What do you think happens to your bottom line votes if you can appease to the obese in America? What oh is God, that, like 100 million people? <laughs> I don't even know what that number is. I love, where's it's, Jamie? We well, need to get Jamie to pull up how many Jamie, people are morbidly Aaron, obese in, in America. Aaron, in 2023, we're getting a Jamie. Okay. By the way, if you don't know what we're saying, Jamie is like the sidekick of Joe Rogan who pulls like all the stats on the show, right? What are you doing? Trying to pull up Jamie right now? I'm pulling up, I'm pulling it up right oh, now. Are you doing the obesity numbers? So again, I, I want people to be enabled and empowered and all treated the same way. Choose the best person for the job, right? Everybody's equal. But you can't just keep lying to people and making it like it's okay that they are a walking time bomb. And that's what they do because, again, they want votes. It's exactly what they're doing at the border, not to, not to veer off track. When you turn your head on four and a half million illegal, keyword illegal, immigrants pouring into America, you have a humanitarian crisis and a, and a, and a national security crisis. But you guess, guess what else you just got? You secured four and a half million votes in the years ahead because – I could never vote against the guy who looked the other way and let me break the law. It's the same thing here. It's disabling, it's disempowerment, and it really, frankly, is hurting the country as a whole, at least here in America. It's hurting society as a whole when you just keep allowing these breakdowns, to, to, these breakdowns in communication and reality to keep happening. It's very concerning. 41.9% of adults in the United States in 2022. We got 350 million or so. <laughs> Let's do it. all ties back to virtue signaling and getting more votes, man. It's so, it's as obvious as the sun in the sky at this point. It makes me irate. So you got 41% of 300 million ish, Aaron? Yeah. I don't know. What is that? 100 and. 70 some well, it's, of, it's of adults. So if we assume okay, that 75% so of 400 million are adults, that's 300 million. 41% of is 120 ish million people. But let me tell you something. You see some of these kids coming up behind their parents. Oh my God, man, it isn't, they're not far behind. They're all pre-diabetic. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it, and there's a lot of things that are impacting those things, yeah. but, but I would go down that rabbit hole, but you can't go down that rabbit hole until you figure yourself out first. That's right. You got to lead from the front. That's right. And then you can say, okay, I, I, I got myself under control. Right. Now I can have that conversation with my kids and I can say, this is well, how much better I feel, how much better I, I, I look, how, yeah. how, my clothes, my self-confidence, 
all of these. Yeah, things. you got to listen. You have to own it first before you can talk about it, right? You don't get to go give advice or be an expert on something if you haven't performed and lived it and done it. And this is also, you know, a problem we see today too is we got a lot of experts out there giving advice and they've not performed at all. You know, oh, my no. biggest concern, you know, we talked about your seventy-five day thing. I'll I'll sort of leave off here. You know, I know we're looking at the time here with what I think you need to do to optimize is you're going to have to figure out a way. And I read this in a book and I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys the book here. I'm looking in my library right now for the book. Um, I think it's called, it's called drop acid. Drop acid. Yeah. It's, it's, this is one of the doctors I follow. His name is David Perlmutter. He's written the grain brain and a lot of, a lot of books on, peak performance as it pertains to nutrition. That book specifically is on uric acid, which is something you want to keep track of from an inflammation standpoint. Different Mm. topic for a different day. But what he said in that book has stuck with me for two years now. He said, every single human body was designed to be treated and managed as if it was a professional athlete. And I was like, wow, I completely have sort of lived that because I played at, played sports at such a high level and I kind of always wanted to maintain. I enjoyed the preparation, so I always maintained in my life a, a an athletic-like regimen. To this day, I still do. And I was like, that's going to be so much more important today than it ever was because what we saw, the meltdown, the mismanagement of COVID over the last two years, and just now what we're seeing, we, we got two years of data now. We have the the most medicated are getting the sickest. Because they're leaning on the medicine that really isn't tested and it hasn't performed and it's really a disaster. And they're not leaning on good old fashioned prevention, really the start of the show, right? Prevention and optimization strategies that really put you in a situation where you don't even need to participate. Like your goal should be to, how do I stay out of the biopharmaceutical complex? That's a band-aid. They're in the sickness business. They're not in the health business. They're in the managing sickness business. I haven't been sick in years. I I don't even think I ever got COVID. I think I had it for like an hour or a couple hours in one day. I think I had a, had a, I felt a little achy, but I was so prepared and I did it deliberately, right? So I, and, and I'm in a different, the stuff I did, I, I think is not what most people would do, but I felt it was fun to get myself in the best shape of my life at 48 so that I wouldn't need to participate in the COVID cabal, frankly, is what it was. So I think for you, we're in a whole new era right now to, to, to put a bow on this. We're in the virus era. If you think it's normal that we keep seeing flus and RSV fee, RSV flu, whatever they call it, and new variants and new variants and new va- We've never had this before. This is all a result of over-vaccination with a leaky form of medication that causes shedding and what is called scientifically as pathogenic priming, which actually causes more strains, more mutations, and more virus. We are so sick right now from so much medicine flying around and we have so many viruses flying around. I had to issue a statement to our company. I think you might have caught the end of it. I said, guys, I got to be honest with you. If you're going to continue to pump yourself with boosters, I don't know if I can have you here anymore. You're all sick. You're all as sick as you've ever been. Everybody that gets another booster is in the hospital or has the worst case of flu I've ever seen. They don't have a voice. They can't talk. They're getting all kinds of other stuff. Their autoimmune systems a mess. Their immune system's broken down. I'm like, guys, I might have to do a reverse mandate. I can't have you if you're vaccinated. You're killing us. You can't get to work. You're all sick. None of us are sick. You're all sick. And they're like, shit. They're doing the math. I'm like, you haven't noticed this yet? Like the people that I know that are the highest vaccinated against COVID-19 are are the sickest people in the world right now. And they're still, they're still hypnotized. Some of them, not all of them. So you got to figure out, whoa, 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 whoa. I've got to be able to do this on my own. They will have you thinking that you can't fight a cold, that you can't, that you They're coming up with a vaccine this week, brother, I kid you not, that is designed to tackle seasonal flu, RSV, and COVID all in one shot. The fact that they can even say that with a straight face is is like, you got to figure out a way, guys, to not have to participate in the cabal because they will have, you will be a human pincushion if this keeps up. You've got to find a way to do what we're doing because if you do what we're talking about, the diet, the nutrition, treating yourself like an athlete, focusing on building more muscle, not focusing on losing weight, focusing on building more muscle, not focusing on losing weight, building the best immune system you could ever have, checking your blood, getting inflammation down, keeping body fat low. You won't need any of that. You won't need any of that. I didn't need any of that. I'm not, I'm not a unicorn here. I just did, did the research and did the math and looked at all sides of the stories and tried to find the data 
and then optimize my body. And I don't think I've missed a day of work since. There are people, they're still wearing masks in certain parts of the world. Like they're gone, man. Like the, the hypnosis is so deep. It's actually called mass formation. The mass formation hypnosis is so deep, Aaron. I don't even know if it can be undone in some parts of the world, especially China really is what comes to mind. So you got to be able to play the game. Now, this, is a new, this isn't going away. I hate to say it, but the virus games, the virus wars, they're not just going to evaporate one day. They're here for many. They're here for the foreseeable future as far as I'm concerned. So you've got to figure out, okay, I got a new war to fight. How am I going to fight the virus war now so I can get to work every day, so I can show up for my family, so I don't put myself at risk, and so that I can be in the best condition of my life to perform, to live, and to show up for my business, to make money, build wealth, and ultimately sustain this long-term game that we're all in. And, and I hate to have to say it, but that war is really in its infancy stages. It's not going away anytime soon. I hate to say it, but all my research, all my data, all my research teams, all my doctors, they all feel the same way. Every single one of them and every single source is completely out of politics and they're completely non-bought and paid for by big pharma. So we like, we don't have any incentive. We don't care. We just want truth, transparency, and we want results. We're not tied to a political party and none of them are tied to payments and the payments are enormous. You would be blown away, Aaron, if you saw the amount of money that has been paid out to support this narrative. It is incredible. I be we track the money too. It's in... <laughs> And it's right there. It isn't even like, it's not that hard to find, but nobody wants to look. They just want to be told what to do. Give me the news and give me the pill so I can get back to being busy and not achieving much. It's frankly the majority. And I hate to, I hate to, to, to have to say that, but that's where we are. It's not a, it isn't a pleasant place, but I'm hoping that this information today motivated, educated, and inspired to some degree, because that's what it was designed to do. I think we need to end with the fact that wealth will float to the minority, not the majority. So you want to operate like the minority, not the majority. And you're going to have to get way, way out of your comfort zone now because of what I just said here at the end. You're going to have to do things way differently. You're going to have to work out and eat and supplement and learn different forms of prevention more so today than you ever have in history or you're going to lose the virus games. Because it is a war and it won't be as simple as just getting to the gym or just cutting some sugar. Like the little things, the subtle things we, were, we used to be able to do, you're going to now have to play like at, at, at professional athlete level. Like the guy said in the book, you're going to have to treat yourself like you're some sort of superstar athlete. You're going to have to really muscle up. You're going to have to trim down fat. You're going to have to dramatically cut sugar up protein. You're going to have to move like Aaron you're doing. Might be twice a day. You're going to have to basically... You're going to have to embrace the suck, as I think they say in CrossFit. Embrace the suck. If you're not embracing the suck, you're not working hard enough. You're not optimizing hard enough. And you will fall victim to everything we talked about. It is, it's, it's a ruthless battle, and I don't think it's going to subside anytime soon. So better put on the armor and the, the warrior costumes and the vests and the helmets. What do they call the Vikings? The, uh, what, are those, what are those? What's the armor they call you, you need I don't know, put, the chest plate? What, what's the armor that the Vikings wear? Like the warriors and old, old school and like gladiators. What, what do they call like the, you know, they used to wear the, they'd have the mask and then the, the suit of armor? I don't know, something like that. I felt like there was like a, a, an old Greek goddess name or Greek god name to it. But you're going to have to basically suit up to play the game and show up. And we're going to continue to bring topics like this on Sales Velocity TV because frankly, people want them. We, we've been asked. The sales stuff is cool. Everything I think revolves around sales and gets back to sales and naturally we won't get away from that. But it's the stuff that allows you to show up and sell more that will make the most difference. It's things like this, it's, it's, it's personal development, it's physical development, it's mental development. This is the stuff that really is how the new game, so to speak, is being played. And it's good to see you playing it, Aaron. Um, I'm kind of always playing it, but always looking at different things. But yeah, getting on a plan and being part of a regimen and being part of a movement is key today and it will keep you motivated. I'm going to leave it there, man. Um, anything else to add before we wrap it? Not today. Well, then that's a wrap. This was the first one of 2023. But again, you don't have to be watching it at the beginning of a new year. This is relevant uh, and, and, and probably important to the times that we're in right now. So we'll see you next episode. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. This one's a wrap. Over and out. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. 
take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.